Hello, welcome to the professional claims training on the My Yuhin Claims Tool. We will be going over how to build professional claims to the insurance. To get to the claims section, you can either select Home over to the left and then click on Submit a Claim, or you can simply click on the claims icon over to the left. After selecting New Claim, make sure you are choosing the correct type of claim you'd like to build. You have two choices, professional or institutional. There will be a separate video for institutional, so please be aware that is a different process, and this video is for professional claims only. The first thing to notice is the wording and light gray letters showing an example of how the format should look in each box. Even though you see the light gray lettering, the box is still technically blank until you put something in that field. If the page does not show everything, you can adjust your zoom settings at the top right of your browser by clicking on the three dots and adjusting the zoom. If you click outside of the screen, you will lose all of your claim information that you entered, so be aware of that. The first section will be the patient information where you can either look up the patient if they have already been added, or you can click the green circle that says add new patient. You will see it asks for the patient's name, date of birth, group ID number, which is not a required field. Very few insurances require the group ID, so don't put anything in that box unless the patient's insurance card specifically lists it. If the patient has Medicaid, you may leave the group ID box blank. The next box down is the member ID number, which should be on the insurance card. If the patient has Medicaid, this is where the Medicaid ID number will go. The gender and the full patient address is also required. After you fill in the information, you can click Submit and it will save your patient. So the next time that you go to bill for this patient, they will show up in your patient lookup. So what I'm going to do is click in there and start typing Mickey Mouse and that appears for us. As you can see, it has pre-filled all of the information that is required for a new patient. So after entering this, you can scroll down to the next section. You will notice a box here that says the patient is a dependent. And you will only want to mark this if the patient is not the subscriber. This would mean, for example, that a patient would be a child, a spouse, employee, etc. So if they have that, then you'll want to go ahead and click one of these. And if the patient is a dependent box is checked, you will need to add the subscriber. So this, for example, would be the patient's parent that you would want to add in here. And it works the same way as the patient box does above, where you'll want to enter their information so that the insurance can locate the subscriber. To continue on, I am going to keep this as a regular patient, as a regular subscriber, and continue on down my list. The next section is the provider data. You will see the submitter contact information is pre-filled for you. The information should be someone in the company who bills the claims. The next spot down is the billing provider. You will notice a box where you can put a check mark that indicates whether or not you are an atypical provider. If you are not an atypical provider, do not put a check mark in this box. The next spot down is the billing provider search. All providers that you add in the create provider section, which is over to the left, will appear here. You can click on the arrow and it will show all of the providers that you have added. In this case, I have added Jerry Seinfeld. So I'm going to click on his name and it pre-fills the information for me. And if we keep scrolling down, We'll see it is filled in the address on both the physical and the mailing so there's nothing you need to do here if you keep going down you will notice more boxes for other provider information for example there's the rendering provider 
the service facility location, the supervising provider, and the referring provider. These boxes are not required and it does depend on the services that you bill. So this is where they are located. And if you have facilities or other providers that you need to add, those can be done in the add provider section over to the left as well. The next section down is the line information for the claim. The first spot is the choose payer box. This is where you're going to choose the insurance that you are going to bill. So what you do is click in the box and you can search by either the insurance name or by the five digit payer ID number. In this example, I am going to bill Utah Medicaid. So I'm going to type in Utah. And after typing in Utah, you'll notice the options Medicare, Molina of Utah, Regents of Utah, several Utah plans are listed right in there. But because I'm going to do Medicaid, I will do Utah Medicaid. And you'll see there's one for atypical and one for fee for service. In this situation, I am billing a fee for service. So I'm going to left click on this one. The next spot down is where you can put in your diagnosis codes. Over here, you have a green button that you can click, which will allow you to have up to 12 diagnosis codes. One nice thing is the decimal in the diagnosis code is no longer required, so you can type it in without any other decimals. I'm going to remove this because I only have the one. Now we have our date of service. From here, it will bring up the calendar where you can choose the start and the end date. And there are a few different ways you can do this. After clicking in here, you can either choose, for example, February 1st through February 8th, and it will fill in that week for you. Or you can type in the box 0201-2021. And an easier way, if it's just one date of service you're billing for, you can also find the date, double click on it, and then it will select it for you. We then have our place of service, which I'm going to do 11, and our procedure code, I'm going to do 99201. And then if you have a description or if you have a procedure code that requires that, you can click here that says add note, and here is where you can put any description that is needed, such as a homemaker or caretaker. There are specific codes that need that, so if they don't need one, no need to put anything here. This is just situational. The next box over, we have the modifiers. And not the modifiers are not required, but if you have any, this is where you're going to add them. The next box is the DX code pointer. This is going to point to which diagnosis code applies to this particular line. In this case, I only have one, so I'm going to type in a one. If I had more that applied, I would do a comma, and then two, comma, four, comma, however many I have, that's how I would add them. And unit type, units or minutes, I'm going to be billing for units. Number of units, this can be number of days, number of hours, however you usually bill it, this is where you can do that. I do a one and charge per unit, I'm going to do $100. And if you have any drug information that needs to be entered on the claim, you will be able to select this blue button and it will let you add that information here. If it is not required or doesn't usually go into your billing, then that is not a required field. If you have multiple dates of service for the same patient, you can click the plus sign here and it will add as many lines as you'd like. So if I see the patient multiple times in February, I can add them all right in here. And then the next place down is the bill type. We're going to choose original 
replacement or void. If you do a replacement or void, it will bring up an original reference number box. And here is where you're going to put the internal control number that the insurance assigns the first payment that they made on the, on the claim you're trying to replace. But this is an original claim, so I'm going to keep it as original. And then a claim filing indicator we're going to select Medicaid on this one because that's who I'm billing, but the most commonly used ones are Medicaid, Blue Cross, Commercial Insurance, and Medicare are also popular ones. The next section down, you're going to do the Provider Signature on File is Yes. Provider Accept Assignment, I'm going to do Assigned. Benefits Assignment, Yes. Release of information, yes. All of these questions were asked in the old tool, if that's something you used, and they were pre-filled for you. But in this case, we are giving you the option to change them uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So I'm going to put all four of these as yes. The next spot down, you'll see additional dates box, and this is if the insurance needs either the accident date, the admission date, or any other date that would apply to the claim, you would select it here and then add in the date over to the right. But in this case, that's not requiring to me, so I do not need it. We also have where you can put a property and casualty number, a prior authorization number, or a CLIA number. If you don't normally build these or you're not sure what they are, you probably don't need them. So now that I have everything filled out, I'm going to select Submit. And this will tell me if something is wrong with the form. So down here you can see it says there are one or more errors on the form. So I'm going to scroll up and see if I can spot what is wrong with my claim. Okay, so it looks like there is a mistake on the patient's address. It does need to be UT instead of the word Utah. So it looks like that's why it didn't go through for me. Now that I fixed that, I'm gonna go back to the bottom and click submit again. And once your claim has been successfully submitted, you will see this box pop up. It will give you a claim ID number, M-U-C-L-M -M number, and when you call us to check on a claim, you can give us this reference number and we'll be able to look it up for you pretty quickly. After you submit it, you have the option to keep current information. So what this does is keeps everything in the claim that you just did. So if you see multiple patients on the same date, all you have to do is change the patient name and then you can resubmit it as long as all the coding is the same or you can simply change the information in the claim if needed in general. Thank you for joining us for this training video on professional claims and keep an eye out for more to come. Have a nice day everybody.